My mother always read it. She's dead and gone now. She always read it with a cup of coffee. A lot of the progress that the Tupelo has experienced through the years is a direct result of, of the vision of Mr. McLean and others at Tupelo back in the uh, in the late 30s and 40s. A community's identity is so rooted in its newspaper. And if the identity of the community every day says um, murder, crime, um, scandal, problems, then the community starts believing that about itself. People no longer want to live there. People have something to complain about every morning when they get their paper. And, you know, while those things do go on in, in Tupelo, just as they do in every community, those aren't the only things that happen. And so by focusing on the positive and reminding people the good things that are going on, it makes people feel better about themselves, about the community, about the choice that they've made to, to invest here in this, in this place. I'm pretty convinced that at the heart of a really strong community, there has to be a strong newspaper. And the towns uh, that I've seen that don't have them are withering away. We're very fortunate here to have a strong newspaper, but I think we have a strong community because of a strong newspaper. I think what we offer that's uh, unique is a community building approach. Uh, we're not focused primarily on profits, although that certainly is important if we want to remain in business. But our focus on building community, improving quality of life, in this region is, is what makes us unique. To understand the McLean era, you have to understand George McLean. He was a community visionary and a community developer who just happened to own a newspaper uh, and wanted to use it as a tool to improve the quality of life of the community and region. I bought a bankrupt newspaper from the bankrupt bank in Tupelo, Mississippi in June 1934. So I've had a long residence there, except for the time when I was in the Navy in World War II. I have very strong convictions, and I am very free to express them. And I believe that it is the responsibility of the educated people of Mississippi to try to help raise the level economically, educationally, spiritually, and otherwise, of the people of Mississippi. There's nobody else that's going to come in here and do it for us. And I am worn out and antagonistic to the idea that we've got such sorry people, we've got to be 50th in practically everything. George McLean was an extremely high-energy person. I remember asking Mrs. McLean, what's the essence of George McLean? And she said, George McLean was a very serious man uh, who was focused primarily on raising the quality of life of people uh, who, as he said, would otherwise have been mired in poverty. And uh, he led his life like that continually. Very deeply religious man, very deeply religious. A friend of mine who is a Presbyterian minister once told me, he said, if I didn't know better, I think that George McLean and not John Calvin was the father of Presbyterian faith. So he's driven by his religion, committed to the idea of having to raise the quality of life for all his people and 
very well focused on that. McLean had a vision of economic development that was way ahead of its time and that he believed that uh, we should invest in people. What McLean said was we need to go after people who are going to be good community citizens. We need to go after uh, industries that will pay a reasonable wage. We need to go after people who care about their employees and educating, uh, you know, and, and educating and training them. And we as a community need to invest many uh, uh, or most of our resources, available resources, in development of that human capital, so to speak. Probably the biggest legacy, the part of the Tupelo story is sort of the economic diversity, industrial and economic diversity. And so that's what he was champion when he uh, developed the Community Development Foundation itself. Uh, CDF is the Community Development Foundation and it is the uh, economic development jobs creation um, institution in the community. It is the what other communities might call the Chamber of Commerce. It has a chamber division within it, but it is focused on creating jobs in Tupelo, Lee County, and to a lesser extent in the region. People of the Community Development Foundation is another thing that George started, really. It was our old Chamber of Commerce, and he had liked the Chamber of Commerce much. I think at that time they were against the TVA, and that didn't suit him too well. So we started the Community Development Foundation and that's been the, they've been the engine to our success. The Journal has been supportive of that, but the Community Development Foundation really has been it. And that was another one of his projects that he started. The Tupelo Northeast Mississippi area historically has been the most industrialized and economically diverse uh, areas within, you know, within the state of Mississippi. And that's not, that's not by accident either. It's about, it's as a result of of work that the newspaper in part and our leadership in partnership with our community has helped make happen but I don't think it would have happened without the agenda and tone and content of the newspaper itself. We make value judgments all the time in choosing what to write about and you do good journalism good journalism is not uh, you know is not slanted or advocacy in the sense of, of just presenting one side, but there's, there's no objectivity uh, in the sense, in the purely detached sense, I think, in any journalism, because the very decision to deciding what you're going to write about is a value judgment. It's either it's interesting or it's important or people need to know about it. And so in choosing what to write about and what to hammer away at and what to focus your journalistic resources on, um, you, you make value judgments and the journal has always done that and so it covered the highway issue relentlessly and it covers education relentlessly, it, it covers community and economic development uh, in, in that same fashion. In 36 when a devastating tornado hit Tupelo, that became sort of a, a community rallying point under which, uh, from which a lot of development occurred, a lot of energy in the community from that disaster. It was a horrible experience, it was terrifying. We were in our home and that thing, after the thing, after the tornado got deathly quiet, we didn't know whether anybody else in town was alive or not. People were killed on the houses across the street from my house, behind us, where well, we were up on North Church Street at the time. In my view, the, there was a positive side to that. The Red Cross came in here and blacks and whites, but both their homes were destroyed about in proportion to the population. It was the, 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 the area that the tornado took. And so we were all in that thing together and people had to be working out together. I think George McLean and, the, and Harry Rutherford, who was the editor, for, longtime editor from the late 40s to the late 70s, um, you know, they had to carefully um, negotiate the civil rights era and 
Most other newspapers in Mississippi, virtually all newspapers with one or two exceptions, were rabidly segregationist and, and defying in their, in their tone and, and editorials and were reactionary in the sense of opposing any kind of change. Our newspaper played a central role in setting uh, a tone that made for little or no racial conflict and strife uh, during the 60s and 70s, unlike most Mississippi communities. Public education is the number one uh, issue for us in terms of our coverage, in terms of our editorial emphasis. Uh, we believe it all begins there. Community development all begins there. And you just look at any community in Mississippi and the correlation is almost exact. Those that have the better school systems that are supported by uh, the broad spectrum of the community in which the broad spectrum of the community has its children and grandchildren, um, those are with, I can't think of an exception, the most successful communities in Mississippi. Reading is fundamental. It's the door through which you move into other things. And when I read, as I do constantly, about the fact that many people are graduating from high school and are functionally illiterate, that breaks my heart. I mean, it's, it's the source of the community, the number one source. Uh, to me, I, the comics. I read the comics first, after the obituary, then I go to the front page, and then to the sports. So I might do it backwards, but I enjoy it more that way. I receive the Daily Journal at my doorstep every morning, and I really enjoy it. Um, my mom got the subscription for me when I was pregnant, so it would give me something to do while I was at home. And now, being a stay-at-home mom, it keeps me in touch with what's going on in the world and around Tupelo. So it's truly really been my sanity every day is getting up and getting to go outside with the baby and pick up my paper and come inside and, you know, put her down and read it with my breakfast. What I like about it is, uh, uh, is like I said, the local stuff and then the neighboring uh, cities and counties around in North Mississippi. And uh, I've been doing that now uh, probably for the last 50 plus years. Uh, that first thing in the morning I have a cup of coffee and read the newspaper. You know, we say the preferred page one uh, topics in our newspaper are education, economic and community development, state and local government, and human achievement. Predating George McLean even, there was this, this layer of people who, who loved Tupelo and they were, com they were committed to it. And then Mr. McLean came along and his age peers and friends became that layer of leadership. And then it, it was handed on and, and you have you know, multiple generations of families who could, who could do something and do it well anywhere else in the country or the world. And they, and they have chosen to come back to Tupelo and picked up that same level of commitment and enthusiasm. And the imprint that Mr. McLean put on everything about the Daily Journal while I worked for him was this is not about us, it is about everybody else and how we can, how we can help, how we can shape the community, how we can shape the society where we have influence. And that, that was, that's different. Uh, it's, it's, it's unheard of almost in the newspaper business. And what we try to focus on are our strengths and really trying to um, let the community know that this is a good place to live. I don't know what the future's going to hold, but the journal's going to have to keep up with technological advances. And then next to that, it's going to have to remain true to the